Hi, this is Isaac with Lotus Kendamas, and today I'm going to be analyzing the Kendama trick called juggling. This is my very first tutorial, so I want to share with you the approach that I'm taking here. So my goal isn't to show you what juggling looks like. My goal is for you to learn how to juggle. I know for a lot of you, you know what it looks like, and it looks crazy, it looks impossible. So this is a full-on, in-depth analysis of the trick. My recommendation is to watch this video one time through and then watch it a second time with a kendama, pausing the video when you want to practice. So first I'll show you what juggling is and then I'll take you step by step with how to learn. I'll include multiple juggles and juggles to spike in this section. I'll go through some common issues and problems. We'll walk through some strategies and tactics that will supplement how to learn. And then I'll conclude with some last words and get you on your way of practicing. So juggling a kendama consists of four movements. And just to reiterate, the ken is the sword with cups and the tama is the ball. One, tama is pulled or tossed up. Two, as tama is coming down, the ken is tossed up. Three, tama is caught and tossed back up as the ken is coming down. Four, ken is caught while tama is in the air. And then the tama can land anywhere on the ken or the ken can be tossed back up to continue juggling. Here's the first person view, and now let's dive into how to learn this trick. So the first step is pulling up the tama. You'll want your knees to be slightly bent, your back straight with solid posture. Uh, focus on pulling up directly in the center of your body. A lot of times the players will gradually pull up closer to their preferred hand, so the right side if they're right-handed and left side if they're left-handed. So if this is your second time watching, pause here and do a pull-up. 50 times and let the tama drop back down um, and just focus on where it's going. Next comes the ken toss and this is the most important part of the trick. Don't initiate the toss too quickly. You'll want to wait to do it extra late when you first start practicing and this is going to seem uncomfortable but it will build a really good foundation. Your finger placement on the ken will change as you refine the trick but to start place your thumb on the upper edge of the handle, your pinky on the lower edge of the handle your pointed finger on the sword in between the ring stall and the serrato, and the rest of your fingers just lie between your pinky and your pointer finger. Now comes the toss. The toss comes from your wrist and it gets forced from your pointer finger. Your thumb is there to support the spin and accuracy of the ken rotation from your pointer finger. Again, if this is your second time through, put the ken in your preferred hand and the tama in the other, flip the ken, touch the tama, and then catch the ken after one turn. Do this 100 times, focus intently on the accuracy and feeling of the flip. So immediately after you release the ken, you have to manage the tama. Luckily, this isn't as complex as throwing the ken, but it's still super important. So this isn't a catch and throw, but it's also not a hit. This is a calculated bounce. A trampoline doesn't catch you, it doesn't hold on to you, and then shoot you back up. Neither does it hit you back up. It takes in the energy you have coming down and then smoothly and consistently redirects you back upwards. Your wrist and fingers are that trampoline that's taking the energy from the Tama and efficiently redirecting it back up. As you learn this trick when you start out, it's going to be a hit and, and that's fine. Uh, but focus on your feeling of the Tama throw as you practice because that's going to help you build Tama control. For the short time that you're bouncing up the tama, you'll want to get in as much contact as you can. So it should land on your fingers barely touching your palm. Your middle two fingers will take in most of the impact. So bounce the tama in your hand 100 times. Don't catch it and don't hit it. Once you get the feeling of it, if you get it quickly, then focus on making the hole stay still. So right when you release the tama, you'll need to manage the ken that's rotating down. Knees will come back into play here. As you catch, bend your knees with the tama's movement to catch it. To practice this one, do a pull up, juggle, and then let the tama back down. Don't attempt to catch it. Do this 100 times and keep mindful of the things that you're doing along the way that are helping you. Write them down and be prepared to change them as you refine the trick. At this point, I'd like to analyze multiple juggles and juggle the spike as well. If you're just focusing on learning juggling to big cup, feel free to skip this section. So from a learning perspective, multiple juggles is a direct descendant of juggle to big cup. Instead of recovering the ken to catch it on the cup, you recover the ken to throw it up again. 
I don't have a specific exercise to practice multiple juggles besides practicing two juggle big cup, three juggle big cup, and so on. But I do have two valuable pointers. The first one is to slow down. When learning tricks with aerial technical movements, players like to react faster than they need to. If you remember learning how to juggle, when you had to teach your brain to wait for the tama to drop more than usual before throwing the ken, do the same thing for the second juggle. Catch the ken after the juggle, notice the tama falling and hold on to the ken for just a moment more. What this does is that it relaxes your hand so you throw a more accurate ken flip leading to a better second juggle. My second pointer is to play stringless. I didn't personally utilize a stringless setup until I was completely frustrated with learning late flips. Uh, after them not clicking for month after month, I played around with an extra set I had and it helped so much. You'll definitely need to get used to it at first, but throw the juggle higher than you need to. Just remember that this is more of a juggling trick than a kendama trick. You're truly building up muscle memory and coordination to juggle two objects independently. Learning to spike directly after juggling comes from tama control. Personally, I just did enough juggling tricks to learn tama control subconsciously. I never grinded out pull up juggle spike like I originally grinded out pull up juggle big cup. I just learned how to consistently spike after juggling by frequently chasing juggling tricks. I subconsciously learned patterns and how the Tama was rotating while juggling to plan my last touch of the Tama to put me in the best position to spike it. Anyway, the thing is with most Kendama elements is that it's very technical and very black and white when it comes to learning, but I'd argue that Tama control is not like that at all. It's all feeling especially spiking after multiple juggles. I do have one good exercise that's only gonna benefit you spiking frequently directly from juggles. I actually use this exercise when learning how to juggle to bird. Do a pull up juggle, but focus on keeping the tama rotation consistent in every try. For example, rotate the tama when you pull up, so when you come in contact with the tama, the hole is straight up. Then do a half rotation with your palm bounce to get the hole straight down. This will teach you to rotate the tama forward, which is vital in spiking more from juggles. An exercise similar to this is to going from spike, juggle, spike, but flicking the tama out of the spike so it rotates into your hand the exact same angle every time. Once you get one juggle down, you can move on to two. And again, the goal is to consistently rotate the Tama the exact same way. Once you've done these exercises enough, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say feeling. It's when you subconsciously know where the hole is and what you need to do to rotate it. There are four aspects of juggling that players have the most trouble with. The first two can be combined into one answer. The first one is having issues with timing and rhythm. And the second is not being able to get juggles looking clean. To go from this to this just takes practice. And I know that's not the answer you want to hear. And frankly, that's not the answer I want to give. But what the issue is, is muscle memory. You aren't fluent yet to do this crazy exchange of objects. Some catches and releases are accidentally later. And then some are accidentally earlier. You'll want to get to a point where you completely relax your hand and catches and releases of the Ken and Tama just naturally flow without much effort. This is just time spent building up muscle memory. Third issue is the string getting in the way. And I am right here with you guys. I have an issue with this and I've always had an issue with this uh, for so long. And I've reached out to a lot of Kanama pros for help. Um, unfortunately, I haven't received one magical trick that just eliminates the string from being tangled while juggling. Uh, but I did realize one thing that I want to share with you. The more that I mastered a specific juggling sequence, the more the string was out of the way. And this was actually pretty surprising to me. It made me realize that the string doesn't necessarily have a mind of its own. It's not randomly getting in the way. Uh, it, it's like when the trick is rooted into your memory, you, your brain can focus on the micro adjustments your hand needs to make to avoid the string being tangled. Here's a good example. 
I was totally frustrated with the string when I was learning juggle, plate flip, juggle spike a few years back. It seemed like the string was the reason for my unsuccessful attempts and not because of my lack of juggling experience. But now I can pull off that trick frequently and when I miss it, it's because of a bad toss and not because of the string. What's especially interesting is now that I'm working on complex and longer juggling tap insta lines, I'm having the same issues with the string that I was having before, which confirms to me that it just has to do with my lack of comfort and experience with that specific sequence, rather than the string just completely being random when it messed me up and having a mind of its own. Regardless, if I ever get to the point to pull off a super complex juggling line like Liad, I will make sure to make another video, but don't hold your breath. Last issue is people saying that their brain or their head or their body's not letting them juggle. And the feeling that your hand has a mind of its own is a common issue among Konama players, especially learning uh, a trick like juggling. This is a result of your reactive part of your brain overriding your conscious part of your brain. For example, when you see the Tama in the air, your reactive brain has only ever known to catch it and grasp it and not to bounce it back up. So what you'll need to do is create new habits. Walk around the house with a Tama, bouncing it throughout the day. Uh, the same goes for Ken flips. Only doing specific parts of tricks will really help with this. For example, pulling up the Tama and flipping the Ken, letting the Ken drop back down and catching the Tama. Getting your conscious brain to override your reactive brain does take a lot of effort and willpower, so I recommend setting a goal of uh, a maximum effort for 10 minutes and then taking a break. All right, and now for pointers. So out of all the pointers that I'm gonna share with you today, the very most important one, I'm sure you can guess it, but it's practice. And I don't mean mindless practice that's frustrating and is a grind. Learning any kendama trick doesn't have to be frustrating. The feel of frustration comes from you not meeting your expectations. And the only way to meet those expectations is doing exactly what you're doing, practicing. The reason that it's the most important tip is because it's the only vital one. You can watch this video 10 times. You can examine banger after banger on Instagram. You can write pages and pages of notes. None of this will really matter if you don't get up and try. There are hundreds of thousands of players that learned how to juggle with just seeing a video of someone else doing it. This tutorial is supplemental. What required is you trying. If you're really burnt out and totally frustrated, I feel you. I recommend just giving it 100 tries a day. Don't judge yourself on those tries. Just do them and forget about it. You will surely see progress. The second tip I have is a different way to look at this trick. This trick exists on two planes, the left plane and the right plane. If you're right-handed, the left is for the Tama and the right is for the Ken, and then vice versa if you're left-handed. While you juggle, the Ken and the Tama need to stay in the respective planes. The only thing that's going back and forth is your hand. Practice this concept by juggling two balls or juggling without a string. The third tip is more from a motivational standpoint Juggling a kendama is an extremely difficult trick. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It's going to take a ton of time and effort to get down. When learning new tricks, I often have feelings of disappointment. I see the trick being done so effortlessly in the tutorial and watching me try it just feels like I wasn't born to do this. You have these thoughts because you're setting too high of a standard for yourself. You need to remember that the best Kendama players have all struggled with the most basic tricks just like we did. Uh, the sturdy salad tree was a seed that needed to be planted at one point and by practicing this and attempting it, you are planting that seed. Last tip here is a trick list uh, for you to practice. This goes in order and by the time you've landed number seven, you should be a juggling expert. In conclusion, let me know how I can help. So comment below with any questions or concerns that I can help you out with. If you get some value from this video, feel free to like and subscribe. And also comment below what trick you think I should be analyzing next.